Logan, I don't want to. I'll give you a couple more minutes to get your desserts and find your seats. But this alert just in, if you have a white Sentra, a white Sentra is running in the parking lot. They've already checked the other restaurants. So if someone in here, if you've got a white Sentra, it's, it's on and running. Again. If we could just take a moment, we know in this day and age that finding talent is extremely difficult. Uh, Pullman always does a great job of, of serving us in and helping us through these evenings. So if we could give a round of applause to the staff here. Thank you.
everybody. And for those of you who maybe missed something over the course of the evening, we are streaming this to our Appleton West Terrors YouTube page. So if you had a, a family member who couldn't make it or you want a keepsake, it will be on our YouTube page. So in the fall of 1998, a committee made up of West alumni, teachers, and administrators came together to create the Appleton West Hall of Fame. The Hall of Fame was established to honor outstanding alumni or retired faculty who, through their achievements, have brought honor to themselves, to their school, and to their community. And the purpose of the Hall of Fame is threefold. First, to recognize and honor individuals who graduated or served as faculty from Hercules School, Ryan School, Appleton High School, or West High School. Second, to establish in the hearts of our youth a motivating influence to excel in their future endeavors. And third, through the example of our inductees, to foster pride, leadership, character, scholarship, and service. We have over 40,000 alumni who've graduated from Hercules, Ryan, Appleton Senior High, and West. And this year's class of honorees represents inductees number 62 and 63. So when we compare that to the 40,000 plus alumni, it really is quite an honor. So to celebrate Dave and Claudine tonight means a great deal, and it means a great deal that you are all here with us as One West. I would like to recognize those current members of the Hall of Fame who were able to join us tonight. So if our current Hall of Fame members would stand, please, we would like to salute you with our applause. So we have Walt Rugland, Raleigh Stevenson, Terry Maves, and Mary Beth Neenhaus here tonight. Please stand. Thank you for joining us this evening. Our selection committee meets periodically to go through a list of nominees and to select an inductees. Many of the nominees remain on the list for several years because we often don't have sufficient amount of information on a nominee to make a clear decision. The committee recently made a commitment to research candidates and supplement the information provided to us and the information that the committee gathered for this year's class clearly showed that tonight's inductees are very worthy of our Hall of Fame. And to aid us in getting word out about our Hall of Fame and all of the other wonderful things <coughs> happening at West, we've partnered with the Appleton Education Foundation in launching an alumni association for our district's traditional high schools, East, North, and of course, West. So to share a little bit more information about that, please welcome to the microphone Mrs. Lori Kaufman. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, just give me a few minutes tonight. Like Mark said, I'm with the Appleton Education Foundation. The foundation is best known for funding Appleton educators' creative ideas to enhance education in their classrooms and schools. We've been doing that for 25 years and have awarded more than $5.3 million thanks to all of our donors, many of you in the room tonight. Thank you. In the last couple of years, yes, you can clap for that. That's exciting. Yay. In the last couple of years, the Education Foundation formally established the Appleton Alumni Network, an online community to help build and maintain relationships with alumni. This effort is led by a steering committee who helps oversee alumni relations at all of those high schools that Mark mentioned, and that is led by Don Hippis, an Appleton High School alum. And then the West Committee has several people here tonight as well, so Kay Martin, Claudine, Happel, and Chris Gerholt are all leading the way for the West Committee. I invite you all to join the network. Our goal is to send regular emails regarding current happenings at your alma mater, spotlight alumni, provide opportunities for alumni to connect, and identify ways to give back to West. Another feature of the network is a digital directory that you can use to look up and connect with classmates that you may have lost touch with. The easiest way to find the site is to visit AppletonEducationFoundation.org and click on the purple alumni button at the top of the page. 
if you're interested in learning more or volunteering, feel free to reach out to me or through the site or any of those people I mentioned earlier tonight. Thank you again for your time and congratulations to tonight's inductees. I really can't wait to share your story through the network. Thank you, Lori. Our Appleton Education Foundation does a fantastic job supporting public education in Appleton. And I'm proud to say that West High School has a long tradition of applying for and getting grants. Uh, every year we are the top grant receiver uh, for a number of years here. So hopefully uh, you're able to, in your own way, support the work of the Appleton Education Foundation. But more than anything, if you can join the Alumni Association, That'll help us do some friend raising, which is always needed because we've got to get the good word out of all the things that are happening here in Appleton. Now, for the good part, um, we are going to have our presentations and our inductions, and uh, I'll introduce the people after the, they are introduced. They'll give a speech, and then we'll come up, we'll do a couple of pictures. Afterwards, where's Ed? Ed Zepka wants our inductees in the back to take a couple of pictures. He'll take pictures with family, friends, whoever you want, and then he'll get that to us so that we can put them on our website to advertise. So with that being said, it gives me great pleasure to introduce tonight's first inductee is going to be Claudine Happel, who is only our second teacher ever inducted into the Hall of Fame. She's going to be introduced tonight by Mary Beth Neenhaus, the first educator <laughs> inducted into the Hall of Fame. So, Mary Beth. Thanks, Mark. Well, before I introduce Claudine, I just want to uh, congratulate Dave Lee on his induction into the Appleton West Hall of Fame. I've known Dave for many years as a golfer and a lion, so congratulations. So, it is my pleasure and my privilege and honor to introduce Claudine Happel to, for her induction into the Appleton West Hall of Fame. She's had a remarkable teaching and coaching career at Appleton West. She has volunteered thousands of hours to the Appleton West uh, in many areas. And I'm sure uh, Claudine holds the most volunteer hours of anyone ever at West. <laughs> Besides her volunteering, she and her husband, Jim, have supported monetarily our community, and in particular, Appleton West. I've mentioned uh, Appleton West quite often, and who do you know who has given back more to Appleton West than Claudine and her husband, Jim? Claudine and I have been uh, friends for 48 years. We were on the Appleton West faculty together, and um, I knew her then as Beanie. So she might maybe share with you how she got that nickname. <laughs> Claudine and I have been uh, uh, such good friends uh, through the years that when I was coaching the girls' uh, basketball team, I needed a JV coach, and I asked Claudine if she would like to do that, and she volunteered to do that. So that is a, a good friend. And since our retirement, we have been in a book club, uh, and it's made up of some retiree uh, teachers. and. Um, some of the retiree teachers are here. In fact, I just want to recognize a couple, Karen and Karen. But Karen Bachhuber uh, came all the way here from Cincinnati, Ohio for this occasion. So thanks for them for coming. So uh, let me begin with uh, sharing some of uh, Claudine's background. She was um, born in the, and raised in the Milwaukee area, Shorewood and Fox Point. She was a graduate of uh, Whitefish Bay School in 1968, and she was involved in uh, a large number of school activities, which she'll probably share with you. Since third grade, Claudine has been a Girl Scout and served as a camp counselor and a senior troop advisor. That's something, uh, Beanie, that I never knew. She uh, graduated from UW Oshkosh with a BS degree in secondary education, and then she received her master's degree in library science from UW-Madison. She was an active member and officer of Gamma Sigma Sigma National Service Sorority. She began uh, her teaching career as a library media specialist at Appleton East for one year 
And then she made a great decision to come to West, staying at West for 31 years. Her coaching career consisted of um, the girls' track team, head coach for 20 years, coaching the cross country team for many years, and she was the letter ladies co-advisor. And after the conclusion of her coaching career, Claudine was also the co-advisor of the National Honor Society for 10 years, and she coordinated the blood drives sponsored by the National Honor Society. The most unique thing about Claudine is that she continues to volunteer at Appleton West. Many of us that have retired from West, uh, we go back for occasional events and sporting things, and Claudine is at Appleton West just about every day. She doesn't need a job, she has a calling. And what does she do for her adopted alma mater? Well, I asked Claudine uh, to give me a list of some of the things that she does, and I cannot believe all the different projects she's been involved in. So I'm gonna share with you a few. Claudine has tirelessly compiled lists of hundreds of former students, teachers, for potential donors for Ample and West. Several years ago, I did help Claudine find the addresses of female athletes who competed in sports in the 70s, and that proved to be a daunting project. She was also involved with the Apple and West Title IX event. She helps with various projects from uh, some of our administrators. She still coordinates uh, the blood drives for the National Honor Society. She helps coordinate the student textbook distribution and collection. There's more. Active member of the Appleton West uh, Hall of Fame Committee and the West Alumni Network. She's a member of the Beautification Committee. I'm not sure exactly what that is. Um, working at track meets and cross-country invitational. She's a member of the core committee of Terror Twilight, which is a community track meet. And the list goes on. Ask her to do any task to keep West best. And in her spare time, she volunteers at uh, Feeding America and at the Appleton Historical Society. And because of their love and commitment to Apple and West, Claudine and Jim have been the driving force for bringing the first football games back to West. And their donations contributed to the field, lighting, sound system, press box, and tennis courts. West now has a sports facility to house football, track and field, soccer, and tennis. They have uh, been honored, rightfully so, by the naming of the facility, the Claudine and Jim Hample Sports Complex. Over the years, Claudine and Jim have also been honored with the Apple Education Association Friend of Education Award, the Apple and West Terror Backer Award, the Wisconsin Athletic Directors Association Direct, uh, District for Distinguished Service Award, Outstanding Philanthropist, Association of Fundraising Professionals, and the Appleton Historical Society Lifetime Membership. Claudine and Jim, um, you are certainly wonderful friends of mine. Uh, they are a great team. They're a unique and very special couple. Apple and West, students and faculty and the community are a better place because of their passion and dedication. And if you see them around town, they're the only couple that wears orange and blue. <laughs> and when Claudine comes to our book clubs, she wears orange and blue. Mark, she has more orange and blue outfits than you do. And Claudine, I want you to come up here just if you can. Because I have a little something for you and I was thinking that maybe this would enhance your uh, orange and blue outfits. And I, I'm sure you don't have this. And it's a season to wear these. Yes, and I'm always cold. <laughs> Congratulations on your induction into the Apple and West Hall of Fame and continue to make West best.
Thank you, Mary Beth and Mark. I greatly appreciate your most kind words. I'm not used to you and be referring to me as Claudine, since you usually call me Beanie, my nickname for, for most of my life. First, here's a little more on my background. Born too soon. I treat that, fra I treat that phrase as one of my mottos. I personally missed out on Title IX legislation, which was signed the year I graduated from college. Up to 1972, there were no girls into scholastic sports, just GAA, or Girls Athletic Association. My early contact with sports came through neighbors, since I could throw the softball or baseball with the best of them, and I was the only girl who could hit the ball of the tennis court fence. My buddies selected me as pitcher for our neighborhood games. Sports during high school were indeed limited for girls. Basketball in schools were restricted to six-player half court, except for rovers. Were we too frail? <laughs> I was able to compete in girls' tennis throughout the state during high school and was ranked in the state for a few years. 1968 and off to UW Oshkosh. What was a five foot one and three quarters inch tall girl to do? I could dribble the ball, so I ended up being a starting guard in basketball in college at UWO, if you can believe that. I also participated in women's team tennis in college. In my early 30s, I competed in 5Ks, 10Ks, and half marathons, and was fortunate to, to experience some success at all three distances. I met my husband, Jim, at a local a Appleton establishment, <laughs> which no longer exists. <laughs> For a couple of years, we were quite sarcastic to each other. We didn't know then that we were made for each other. Other teachers would wonder why this math teacher kept showing up in the library. <laughs> it was a great experience and fun teaching at the same school, having similar frames of reference. We knew many of the same students through academics, drama, and, and sports. We both taught at West for over 30 years, and we continued to be part of the West community, or more accurately, the West family. We had so many positive experiences in teaching and coaching. We developed quite an allegiance to West. As Mary Beth mentioned, we proudly wear the orange and blue of West almost every day. I really feel blessed to have what I consider two rewarding careers at Appleton West. First, the professional segment, teaching and coaching from 1973 to 2005. And then, after retirement, volunteering and service has been my second ongoing career. I was a teacher librarian or media specialist and coach during my first career. While serving at West as a library media specialist, I worked in three physically different facilities at West. For 15 years in the original old library, built in 1938 with beautiful parquet floors, which was remade into two classrooms and a teacher prep area. For 10 years in the media center, which is now the location of the art department, and for the final five years in the current LMC, which is now again being referred to as the library. At various times during my teaching career, I coached track, cross country, and basketball, and volunteered as a letter ladies advisor. I also served on, many, on numerous school committees and enjoyed serving my colleagues through the Apple Education Association during my tenure. Although I consider these parts of my professional career to be very important, I would not expect them to be primary reasons for me to be standing here tonight. The honor of being in the Hall of Fame is based on what I have done since I retired. The story of my second career really began at retirement in 2005 through the AASD Emeritus Program. The program was set up to promote and reward, reward teachers to consider early retirement and then con continue to serve the school district. I served as a substitute library media specialist at many district LMCs. I also substituted ELA for English, utilizing my undergrad degree in that subject. After I completed my emeritus time, I continued to volunteer throughout the, the district, being known as the weeding queen by my former media colleagues. 
The majority of my AASD volunteers activities in recent years have been at, at West. Shortly after our retirement, Greg Harches suggested that the Happels use some of their educational experiences, talents, and financial means to provide a needed push or impetus for the field project, addition to addition, and turfs up. My volunteer connection has been a seamless transition with Mark McQuaid and is continuing to this day. Our initial experiences at West and serving West in different phases went well for myself, Jim, and the AASD. What a wonderful experience being at the Claudine and Jim Happel Sports Complex on the West Campus for the first ever varsity football game. Being told later by one of the football coaches that several team me members had mentioned how neat it was to be able to run out of the door of the West locker room right, right onto its own very own field was quite memorable. Being a former track and field coach, it is difficult to put into words how I felt at the first track meet at the Happel Sports Complex. Wait, I am jumping ahead too soon. It would take too much time to tell you about each volunteer experience, so let me highlight a few. Oops. A few of my projects. Many took place on site at school, but there were a good number I worked on at our home. Since Jim and I both had majors in, or minors in history in college, we have significant interest in the history of Appleton West. I have become a de facto West historian. I am often contacted to help do research and share accumulated knowledge. With the assistance of a couple of friends with interest in history, I continue to help organize the archives, which is currently housed in the vault, but hopefully at some point we'll have a more, more visible setting. It is difficult to count the hours I've spent dealing with statistical data, gathering, tallying, compiling, compiling failure data, and tracking of certain segments of the school population, previously for Gray Harches and currently for Mark McQuaid. I also have, have done and continue to work on projects for the Associate Principal for Curriculum Instruction, currently Amy Didrickson, work on sometimes somewhat mundane tasks. I do grunt work very well. Um, my knowledge of West and its courses has proved helpful for many projects. Being involved with the revision of interior signage has been beneficial and helpful, helpful to visitors, guests, and students move, move to West. I assisted the activities director with several West projects. The first was entitled Celebrating the 70s, at which we recognized and honored those female individuals who participated in the initial decade of girls' sports following the passage of the Title IX legislation. Due to the pandemic, the awesome 80s was postponed, but will be rescheduled to take place next year. I also did considerable research for the previous AD on celebration of 50 years of the Fox Valley Association and for Title IX, searching out photos, participant information, and awards for sports programs recognizing basketball, softball, and soccer. With the assistance, assistance of a friend who also enjoys local history, I'm continuing to work on a history of Appleton West 1938 to 1990, an ongoing project involving interviewing graduates, perusing old West yearbooks or clarions, and newspapers, talismans, and studying primary source items in the West archives. As Mary Beth mentioned, I am also a member of the core committee for our annual Terra Twilight, the citywide track meet. Our 2022 meet had 125 participants ages 1 to 70. All my service time, however, is not spent doing serious mundane tasks. I have truly enjoyed helping coordinate joint current and retired staff get-togethers, which provide an opportunity for retirees to maintain a connection with West and for current staff members to meet some of those who preceded them. In addition to my love of Appleton West, having had allegiance as well as positive experiences with educators and coaches, I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to serve the greater Appleton community. I support the missions and purposes of several nonprofit agencies with my time and effort as well as financially. I am currently concentra concentrating my non-West volunteer efforts at Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin and the Appleton Historical Society. 
These organizations, among others, are very appreciative of my efforts and never put forth the impression that they feel entitled to my support. They have welcomed me and Jim with open arms and hearts. Feeding America, Eastern Wisconsin, I feel blessed to have an opportunity to perform, to perform some physical tasks that benefit the food insecure in our community. I volunteer in the warehouse several times a month, sorting, bagging, boxing, donate food, item, food items, plus writing individual thank you cards to donors throughout the year. The Appleton Historical Society, I have a love of history, especially that of Appleton. We are interested in the origins and development of the city. I am presently helping to catalog items donated to the society. During the nomination and selection process for the 2020 Outstanding Philanthropist Award, one of the nominators wrote, I quote, Claudine and Jim are servant leaders who give back to the community in several ways. Their donation of time and talent shows the impact of volunteerism is just as important as a donation of dollars, end of quote. This quote seems to capture our spirit and can be used as another motto. I have been asked, Claudine, what are you most proud of and for what would you like to be remembered? My reply is, time, effort, and abilities are certainly more important than financial contributions. We are fortunate to have the means, but the gift of time is a greater factor. We have a strong partnership. Although I do more of the actual volunteering, Jim is so supportive and his understanding allows me to feel very comfortable donating my time. Although we have made and continue to make significant monetary contributions, I would like to be remembered for my time, effort, expertise, and dedication to Appleton West and the greater Appleton community. My guests, without whom I would not continue to be deeply involved in West and the community, I wanted to invite just those who mean the most to me and to whom I feel the closest. First, my large family, including my husband Jim, my best friend. Um, he's ex extremely supportive of my time, efforts, and dedication to Appleton West and the greater Appleton community. My sister Amy and her husband Terry, here from Crandon. Amy and I have gone closer and closer as we've got, gotten older. That's cute. Um, others in no particular order. Val Dunham, uh, Secretary in the West LNC. Although I never actually worked with Val when I was a library media specialist at West, we have and continue to collaborate on a, on a variety of West duties. Uh, Shannon Jordan, in, in connection with several other terror women, we sent a large number of letters to parents of athletes and, and former West athletes in support of the Alton West Field Project Addition to Tradition. We have become good friends and continue to maintain contact. She is currently the grant specialist at Pillars. Julie Locke Beck, West class of 1988, and her husband Chris. Um, she ran track at West, and Jim had her in an advanced math class. We continue to get together with her and her family several times per year. Julie t currently teaches sixth grade at Omro Middle School. Chris Haline Cole, class of 86. I was both her track and cross country coach. We ran together for many years after she graduated from West, and we still managed to get together several times a year. Greg Hartis and his wife Karen. Greg was instrumental in leading us to a path of gifting our talents to our adopted alma mater. But this path led to the Claudine and Jim Happel Sports Complex and later projects such as Addition to Tradition and Turfs Up. As he moved up his way up the AASD administrative ladder, he has continued to meet with us several times per year to discuss life and work. I definitely have a great deal of respect for Greg. I consider him a friend in addition to a former colleague. Tina Dietrich, a very good friend with whom I walk, talk, and golf. She in actually introduced me to Feeding America. Karen Kotowski, a retired math teacher, a walking, golfing, and book club buddy. Karen Bach, Huber, here tonight from Cincinnati, um, also a retired math teacher. After I gave up coaching, I had time to be a co-advisor with Karen for West National Honor Society for 10 years. Chris Gerholt, class of 1976, knew her both as a student and an athlete. 
a retired English teacher. Chris is currently the West, Her West Head Girls tennis coach. Barbara Earl, class of 1968, what a year. Former media colleague, we meet for BFF breakfast and solve the problems of the world, at least in our own minds. Uh, Liz Wollenberg, I met, met Liz when, when I started volunteering at Feeding America with Tina. She was then the volunteer engagement coordinator. She is now vice president of Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin. In an add-on to our Feeding America connection, I also recently worked with her to establish a feminine care project initiative at West. Without the support, understanding, listening ability, and love of each of these individuals, I would not have been able to dedicate the time, effort, and talents to Athlon West and the community, which I enjoy immensely and also have made me the individual I am today. Thank you to each and every one of you here tonight. Let's come stand right in front here so the camera can pick you up. And Mary Beth and I all frame you here. So if I've done my math correctly, we are coming very close to 50 years of service at West. About a year away, right? That's pretty cool. 50 years of service to anything is pretty amazing. <laughs> Deserving of another round of applause. All right, next up we have Dave Lee. Dave Lee is class of 1965. And what is really special tonight is another alum, class of 1988, is going to introduce him. Please welcome Eric Lee. Thanks, Mark. So, Ms. Happel, congratulations. Thank you. And Ms. Neos, you two, you two are both wonderful people and have contributed so much to the community. We're lucky to have you. Thank you. So, a few years ago, I got a text from my dad, Dave Lee, that came to the family text thread. You guys know about family text threads, right? You all get them. The, the thread that starts off with some inane picture of all the cheese in somebody's refrigerator <laughs> and then devolves into a competition of different pictures and then devolves even more into the history of cheese making and then pretty much it's just down to critique of grammar. Right? You, know, you know the text, right? Well, my family actually hits the grammar first, but then it uh, devolves from there. So he texts to the text thread that he's raising money for a fundraiser, and nobody is surprised. So the fundraiser he's raising for is Leader Dogs for the Blind. They raise money to train dogs to help uh, vision impaired. And it, it was the Double Dog Dare fundraiser. And of course, somebody says, well, what? Yeah, well, we're on board for that. But what's this Double Dog Dare thing? Turns out the first 
people to get to a certain amount of fundraising get to rappel down a 15-story building. Now, you know, we might, as a family, have discouraged my retired dad from doing that, but not my family. We all doubled our donations to get him up there. We knew we would get a story for the ages, and we did. Tonight, my family gets to leave with another story. My dad being inducted to the Appleton West Hall of Fame. Anyone that knows Dave is not surprised. But really, he had a little bit of an advantage, kind of an unfair advantage. He sent five of his kids to Appleton West. So, based on all of the sports that we played, all the musical instruments, all the activities, he spent a lot of time at Appleton West and events. He even listened to my saxophone playing. That's pretty impressive. But the really impressive thing is, I honestly cannot remember a single event of ours that he missed, not home or away. Now granted, sometimes he had to leave early because one of my sisters was in one event and he'd watch the first part of that and he'd go to another event where my other sister was in, but he made every one of those. And that just shows a lot of his character and value to all of us. He supported us without a single question. There was always that support. I think where another area where that, that support really came through was as I was getting ready to graduate from West. And he encouraged me to go into software engineering. He said he thought I was really good at this. I showed him. I got a degree in history and political science and a <laughs> master's in political science. And then immediately out of school, I took a job in software engineering <laughs> where I've been my whole life. Now, he would have never said, I told you so, because that's not the way he thinks. But I hope at least in his mind, at least once he said, I told him so. <laughs> this unwavering support, this incredible kindness, this cheerful optimism went beyond just the family. His dedication to support Appleton and the community shone through. He regularly goes out of his way for as long as I can remember to make contacts between young people just starting out and experienced people in their careers. He oftentimes doesn't know either of them, but he makes the contacts and helps both of them. When he retired from the paper industry, he jumped into the Paper Discovery Center as a volunteer just down the road. Nobody was surprised. Soon, he became the executive director. Nobody was surprised. He took his years of knowledge of science, the paper industry, history in this paper valley, and helped spread it to tons of people. When he joined the Lions Club, nobody was surprised. He immediately started fundraising. He wanted to bring vision testing to the schools to help Appleton students. Nobody was surprised. Not only did he fundraise and bring my mom with him, went into the schools with the machines that he did, and he did testing. 65,000 students in the Paper Valley 
have had vision tests because of my dad. Actually, that's what the number I thought it was. When I double checked, it's actually 73,000 now. Stunning. But nobody was surprised. Not even cancer could undermine his positivity. His treatment included 40 plus days of driving from Appleton down to Milwaukee during COVID. Nobody could ride with him. We couldn't go and support him. And he did this every day. And how did he deal with that? Well, on that text thread, he was supportive to us. Nobody was surprised. I am very proud to introduce my dad, Dave Lee. I told you so. <laughs> I knew you'd do a good job. So uh, before I begin here, uh, just a point of clarification. If any of you came here tonight and came up to me to exchange pleasantries and you weren't recognized right away, my guess is that you approached my brother Tom and not me. Tom, will you stand please? <laughs> now, some people tell us that there's a resemblance. I don't see it, but thanks for coming up from Chicago, Tom. I would like to uh, thank those who nominated me for this honor, and apparently I'm allowed to re reveal that. The primary nominator was Bob Simon. Bob, thank you so much. And it was uh, co-signed by Bob Randa and Tim Bauer, uh, all members of our Lions Club. And Tim also happens to be a member of the class of 65. So thank you all. And I certainly want to congratulate Claudine. Uh, what an incredible uh, commitment to Appleton High School, Appleton, and young people. Thank you so much. And your legacy will live on forever. And Mary Beth, the same for you. Uh, thank you. And thank you other, uh, thank you to all of the other inductees who are here tonight and for all that you have done uh, to make this community a better place. And I can say that some of us know the secret of making a decision after college to come to Appleton. Come back to Appleton and have your career in Appleton. It's uh, a magical, wonderful place made better by many of you, but isn't Appleton great? So I also wanna thank those of you who influenced me in favorable ways to help make me worthy for this recognition. And for those of you who have made my life so worth living, I hope that you have good feelings as well. And I love you all. I love you all. Um, I had the opportunity because I, you know, I, we have to submit the information that goes 
onto the plaques. And I was really not quite sure what to include, so I talked to Bob Simon, and Bob gave me a tour at Appleton West, and I saw all the plaques. And I photographed every single one of them, and I read every message. And, uh, <laughs> who said that? Uh, but um, one comment I have about those plaques, I think it'd be wonderful if in the uh, history segment on the website for Appleton West, uh, those plaques, uh, photos, or text would be included for the public to see. Uh, I was blown away by the messages on the, on the plaques, and I was comforted by the fact that they're all over the place in terms of the messaging. And so that told me the door is open. And, um, and I, I should preface my remarks by saying when Bob Simon knocked on my door and told me about this induction, I knew nothing about this initiative. And um, I guess with Sue Lee I'll get even, but she sure can't keep a secret. Um, so uh, what I'd like to do tonight is begin by sharing my message on my plaque. And then after that, I'd like to highlight three perspectives from my life. And then that'll do it. So uh, looking at the plaque, and here it goes. When our five children were young, we would often read a favorite book to them about a tenacious goat named Bucky. Bucky faced many adversities, but Bucky was plucky. He kept right on. That's the recurring phrase throughout this children's book. What a simple reminder to never give up when things don't go our way. Fortunately, our kids developed this grit mindset that has served them well in life's adventures, and grit has helped me deal with the ups and downs in my life as well. I value my education at Appleton High and later at Ripon College with a degree in chemistry and then at UW Oshkosh with an MBA. A 30 plus year at what began as Bergstrom Paper and after an acquisition it became Gladfelter provided personal growth and unlimited challenges, opportunities, and wonderful friendships. A second career at the Paper Discovery Center gave me the chance to share my enthusiasm for paper chemistry and paper history. Little did I expect that my third career would be so fulfilling. The Appleton Noon Lions Club has provided many friendships and service opportunities. We've initiated and led spot vision screening for 70,000 area students between 2014 and 2022. Serving others has brought me great satisfaction. Three maxims that have guided me over the years are kindness matters, be the difference, and fall six times and stand seven. And having a sense of humor has made life a little more pleasant along the way. I want to thank my partner in life, Sue Lee, for her love and support Indeed, she's the better half in every way. And then at the bottom it has Dave Lee, AHS class of 65. And, uh, and that's the plaque. 
I'd like to make one uh, editorial comment about the plaque. I mentioned the grit in our five kids, and I'd like to share one specific example. While in college, all five of our kids had the opportunity to work in the paper mill during the summers where I worked. You might call that an opportunity or not an opportunity. <laughs> And it was common for the, for the permanent workers to tease and make life interesting for the summer workers. And my guess is being a production manager part of the time and mill manager part of the time for these kids maybe brought them a little bit more of conniving attention. So one of our daughters was spending a week working with the janitors. And one of her obligations was to uh, clean up in the cafeteria and one of the maintenance workers thought he'd uh, make things a little difficult and he took his grapes and started squashing them on the table so this daughter picked up one of his grapes and squashed it in his ear <laughs> and the cafeteria went up for grabs and Rodney the, uh, the maintenance worker absolutely loved it and our daughter had, uh, had earned immediate respect from the workers. And um, I can assure you that our other kids have the same grit. And if time permitted, we could have many, many stories. All right, on to my first of three perspectives. And this is that if we sit back and just think about how we have gotten to where we are, it's kind of amazing how we're influenced by so many factors and shaped by circumstances. And of course, we make choices along the way. But to highlight a few, in high school, and by the way, I've got some high school buddies here tonight, uh, Greg Otis, Moose Miller, Marty Mice, Guy Martinick, and Chip Retson. Please stand, you guys. That's long enough. So I can't remember if any of you were with me, but um, this is back in the days when the YMCA was kind of, there was a library behind the Zilke building and then the old Y was behind the library on Lawrence. And then there was a congregational church, and then down below that, and there still is, the old uh, Fox River paper headquarters and a parking lot. And a few of us in high school, and remember, it was 18 for drinking beer at that time, so I, you know, some of us were of age, were, were having a few beers on a Friday night in the dark, uh, in that parking lot and the sales manager came out and that sales manager had choices you know, he could have been upset with us but instead he came over to us and he said boy it's been a long day you guys have an extra beer <laughs> and he started hyping up the paper industry and then he offered to give us a tour of the Fox River Papers paper mill over the next couple weeks. And Chip, were you there? I thought maybe you were. But uh, I took that tour, and that's really how I got interested in uh, paper making as a career. So um, after my retirement from the paper industry, before the, the Paper Discovery Center had opened, I had the opportunity to fill in for one semester teaching global chemistry at my alma mater, Ribbon College. And this course was for non-science majors. And in preparing for a segment to teach on water chemistry, I learned about the chemistry of hydrogen bonding, uh, particularly for water. And later, when I got involved at the Paper Discovery Center, 
I developed a number of presentations about the science and wonder of water and paper and how hydrogen, hydrogen bonding ties in with both water and paper. And we had different presentations for people of all education, educational levels and ages. Hydrogen bonding is so fascinating. If you learned about it, you couldn't go to sleep tonight. <laughs> Suley, don't you agree? <laughs> She's done some teaching. Of <clears throat> now, also at the Paper Discovery Center, there was an old volunteer, looked a little bit like Dilbert, who would arrive Monday afternoons to help out. And it was uh, right after his Appleton Noon Lions meetings. And uh, this guy's name was Rick Madison, I believe. He's an alum of Appleton High. And Rick was an amazing guy. But eventually he encouraged me to become a lion. And like I've said to Guy and Greg and Marty Moose, hey, I'd like you guys to be my guest at a Lions meeting. The soft sell. Well, without Rick, the richest part of my life would have eluded me. And without Rick, I never would have become a member of the Afternoon Lions. On to my second perspective. My life as a lion. Becoming a lion at age 64 is one thing, but in one of my first meetings I was called the young buck <laughs> by Lion Dell. That was Dell Shu, former Wilson principal, who immediately set up ultra high expectations for me. In fact, much higher than I had planned becoming a member. And um, Dell had plans to fast track me to district governor for Lions, which would be the fifth in our 100 year history for our club. And other Lions also encouraged me, but it was Dell's continual prodding and encouragement that caused me to go the distance and to become a great Lion. And last year, before he died, after I learned about this, and I knew that his time was short, I had an opportunity to thank him, to tell him about this induction, and that, that I would be talking about him tonight. Thank you, Dell, and I, I hope that Dell is listening tonight. I kind of think he is. All right, on to the next part of being a lion. In 2013, I heard that the Marinette Lions were engaged in a high-tech vision screening. And I had to come up for a speak oh, with a speaker for the meeting the next month. And I contacted the Marinette Lions and invited them to uh, present this concept to our club. And in what I consider to be one of the most fruitful decisions of my life, the week before this meeting, I contacted Lee Ellinger, school superintendent, to ask him about having one of their leadership decision makers attend this meeting to hear firsthand with us whether this is something that might have merit in going forward with. And fortunately, Val Dreyer came to that meeting. And we both got very excited. And she had to run this through the leadership group. And I mean, this, this meeting was early June. By January of 2014, Six months later, we were screening all the 4K students in Appleton with a spot unit. And uh, Val had planned to uh, be here tonight, 
and unfortunately injured her ankle. But uh, my thanks to Val Dreyer for helping to open the door so quickly to having spot vision be a part of the uh, school district vision screening. So thank you, Val. And uh, as a, by the way, last Monday, we screened classical school. Some of you may know there are 485 students at classical school, and some of you wouldn't be surprised that there were only 15 absences that day at classical, because that's the way classical school goes. And uh, it took us under two hours to screen 470 students at classical school. That's how amazing the uh, spot distance approach is. Another part of my life as a lion is that if it hadn't have been for vision screening, Sue Lee never would have become a lion. Been there with me for every vision screening since the first couple months. In fact, she was named Lions Volunteer of the Year for our club. Behind my back, she wasn't even a lion. <laughs> and through the wisdom of those uh, award makers, out of guilt, she joined the club a few months later. And this past year, our 100th year as a club, she led the uh, centennial celebration for our club, which was absolutely amazing. With a charter date of March 1st and a banquet of May 22nd, her goal was to have 100 days of lion service from our club. And that was achieved in that time frame. So thank you, Sue Lee, for all that you are and the countless ways that you've been there to keep me on task, or at least to try. <laughs> My partner in leadership, Sue Lee. So the third perspective is what is ahead? What is ahead? When it comes to vision screening, as Eric had indicated, we just uh, surpassed 73,000 students. Sue and I would like to reach 100,000 students before we pass the vision baton. And we are proje projecting that that will be towards the end of 2025. So, um, and by the way, we could not do this with other lions without the help of other Lions volunteers like Mary Beth, Bob Simon, and those of you who will be joining our club who <laughs> just aren't aware of it yet. <laughs> All right, when, when it comes to Lions, it's not only vision. Uh, vision is the main focus on Lions. Helen Keller spoke to the Lions in 1925 and asked Lyons to be her Knights for the Blind. And Lyons agreed to do that. And they've done so many things, developing a white cane program, eyeglass recycling, vision screening of the primitive ways and the high-tech ways, and Lyons Camp, which includes a couple weeks for the visually impaired. Um, but. There are five global focus areas for lions. And the first is vision, but there is also hunger, the environment, diabetes, and um, childhood cancer. Lion Dr. Sri Vasudevan, who's a member of the Port Washington Lions, has led several highly successful efforts to raise substantial funds 
for specific childhood cancer projects in Wisconsin in the short time that he's been a lion. And when I talk about substantial, I'm talking about raising $200,000 to get a $200,000 match from Lions Club International to obtain two flow cytometers to help expedite the research for CAR T cell uh, approach to fighting cancer in, in um, liquid cancers, cancers of the blood, in ways that uh, allow us not to require chemotherapy. And this is especially for childhood cancer. Chemotherapy is not good for kids. And uh, this whole field is very promising, and, and, and Sri has some other accomplishments as well. Well, Lion Sri and I would like to create a Wisconsin Lions Childhood Cancer Foundation and provide more help to this ongoing fight and harnessing the 16,000 lions in Wisconsin as long as well as uh, non-lions entities Lion Doctor Sri, will you please stand? Thank you. He's not only an incredible guy, but he's a great friend. Thank you for coming here, Sri. And then, thinking about the phrase, pay it forward, you know, how, how do we continue to affect things in the future, especially when we might be dead. Well, the most amazing way to do that is through your kids and your grandkids. And our five kids being Appleton High grads, of course, they're super amazing people. And um, in order of age, Eric, please stand. Class of 88, with degrees from Ripon and UW-Milwaukee, working in IT with Harley-Davidson, and a co-founder of the Milwaukee Robotics Academy with his wife, Emily. Emily, please stand. <laughs> and their amazing kids, DeMonte and Rico, please stand. Uh, Maurice, uh, their youngest, couldn't be with us tonight. But um, probably not a surprise, but Eric was named Harley Davidson's Volunteer of the Month earlier this year. And I think he had something over 110 hours of volunteer work with that Robotics Academy in, in one month alone. All right. Uh, Kristen, Rit, please stand. You can stay standing. <laughs> but it's good that Eric sat down. All right, a class of 89 with degrees from Ripon and Lacrosse, a UW Lacrosse, a teacher of high risk students in Manitowoc, who was named Northeast Wisconsin Teacher of the Month by WIXX and Marion University a few months ago after a compelling nomination was submitted by one of her former students. Congratulations, Rit. I'd like, no. I could give you a 90 second time out. Uh, Kate, her partner, please stand. And you remain standing. And then I'd like their kids, D'Angelo and Eric, to stand as well. Our grandkids are amazing too, but we're not going to highlight there because with 12 grandchildren, we would be here forever. So now you can sit. Good. <laughs> Jenner. Jenner Dye, class of 89. Ritz twin. They're both pretty feisty. You're right. Rit is the old lady, by eight minutes. Uh, Jenner has a degree from Knox College 
and is a, also in chemistry, uh, is a management consultant and school PTO volunteer leader in Milwaukee. I'd like her husband, or partner Alex to please stand. And uh, we'd like their children, Hazel and Hattie, to please stand. So thank you guys. Sit. Annika Reidelhoover, class of 91, please stand. Um, by the way, um, four of the five kids swam for Zepka, so that's something. But they were all active in sports. Um, Annika, class of 91, with degrees from Northwestern and UW-Madison Medical School. Annika's a Stand, please. <laughs> Peer group pressure, it's an amazing thing. Um, pediatrician in Nina and former high school presidential scholar. And there are only two per year from each state. And her, her partner, Justin. Please, Justin, please. Thank you. And their son, Hans and Max. Thank you. You can sit. And their son Ian is away in, at school. He couldn't be here tonight. And last, not least, Sonia Meehan, class of 93, please stand. <laughs> Phi Beta Kappa from Ripon, who taught third grade in central Milwaukee for the years probably seem longer than they were, but that was uh, quite an experience. And that's before becoming a personal organizing consultant in La Crosse. And her partner, Casey, please stand. And their sons, Ezra and Augie, please stand. Thank you. So obviously, Sue and I, could not be prouder of each of our kids as well as their partners, and equally so for our 12 grandchildren. And we are confident and really demanding that each of them continues to be the difference in your life uh, as individuals and members of our society. So in closing, thank you all again. This is a tremendous honor and I am truly appreciative. Thank you. Congratulations again, Dave. I don't know if you remember, but when you brought it to the middle schools, I was the principal at Wilson Middle School. And I jumped in line, because I was skeptical about spot vision. I had an eye exam coming up within the next couple of weeks. It took less than 30 seconds. I got a printout, brought it to my eye exam, matched spot on, 100% accurate. So those 73,000 kids, soon to be 100,000 kids, get excellent screening, and then can get excellent care, which helps prepare them for an excellent education. So thank you both Dave and Sue for that. So as we close our ceremony this evening, I wanna take a moment to thank the members of our selection committee. Paul Hoffman, Steve Seifert, Terry Gross, who's here, Kay Martin, who is here, Ed Zepka, 
Bob Simon and Walter Ruglin, all of them are here too. Can we give them a round of applause? I also want to thank Stephanie Kozlowski. Stephanie is our building secretary and she takes care of every detail associated with tonight's ceremony. And incidentally, Stephanie is also an alumna of Appleton West, class of 08. Stephanie, please stand. <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank all of our inductees, past and present, for their service. The history of excellence you represent as alumni of what is now Appleton West is inspiring. At Appleton West, our students learn about our history, the history of our building, and the history of individuals who've passed through our great school. Our new inductees are an integral part of our history. Thank you and have a great evening. And Ed Zepka is going to take some pictures of our inductees back by the west apron over there. Yep, over there. Yep. Find, find the good-looking guy in the blue blazer. Thanks, everyone.